Kimberly. An event meant to discuss political correctness at Amherst, a school, Kimberly, mm. denigrated into a colicky mess as students tried to silence the speakers. Brace your ears. I'm here to provide I see a future in customer service for her. <laughs> yeah. Charming. Now, it's easy to mock her, but she's a victim of a cult-like indoctrination by the new campus religion of safe spaces. She's so brainwashed, she claims blocking speech is actually a version of free speech. It's not a bug in the system. It's now the system, the result of the left's long free reign over campus brain matter. Now, consider what passes for expression in the modern media, where such minds end up. A writer for The Guardian, the British liberal fish rap, claims correcting grammar is now racist. Oh my God. It doesn't take much to see the power imbalance when it comes to grammar snobbery. The people pointing out the mistakes are more likely to be older, wealthier, whiter, or just plain academic than the people they're treating with condescension. All too often, it's a way to silence people. And that's particularly offensive when it's someone who might already be struggling to speak up. All right, so expecting quality conversation from a minority is expecting too much. Sorry, doesn't that make you, the writer, the actual bigot? After all, your expectations of non-whites are so low. She's guilty of activist privilege, an arrogance that allows you to decide who can or can't handle standards or objective truth. The virus is spreading, undoing centuries of progress since the Enlightenment as we excuse reason from the table of discourse. The campus, once an exchange of ideas, is now a daycare center for outrage merchants, gurgling vitriol, donning full diapers of non-thinking hate, making them excellent candidates for positions at The Guardian. So that, uh, that event at Amherst, it had Christina Hoff Summers, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, and Stephen Crowder. Uh, and uh, it was probably meant to be a bit provocative, but... Um, but wherever Stephen Crowder goes. Yeah, something happens. <laughs> and Milo. And Milo. Milo's out of control. Yeah. And Christina, Christina is a very, very smart woman. Uh, around the horn They should here, be lucky to have people come to their school and speak and get up but there ooh, in front of them. new ideas, Kimberly. New I ideas, don't know. Scary. Put them all in a little safety crib with high rails, scared of ideas, scared of free speech. I mean, it's so rude. What about manners? Let's bring back manners. It's so rude. But that's the point. Manners, grammar, racist one. Imagine if, <laughs> if, if, uh, if somebody told your kids that, you know, uh, you, don't need to, you don't need proper grammar because that would be racist. Uh, you wouldn't, couldn't get that check from me. <laughs> Not paying that tuition. That's craziness. But, you know, I think there's an interesting kind of different view of the world, Gregory, yeah. which is I saw in the research we had today that 80% of American college students think free speech is well protected in this country. Mm -hmm. They don't see it. They think this, you know, microaggressions, triggers, inviting people like that, in essence, is feeding bigotry and hatred on campus. And there's one group of students on campus who feel oftentimes intimidated that their free speech right. rights aren't heard, and that's black and Latino students. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. You know the Guys. Enlightenment has come full circle now, <laughs> yeah, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the Guardian, yeah. the copy editor, you know, who checks spelling and grammar yeah. Yeah. the Guardian, is a total racist? Is that what yeah, exactly. 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 They should fire him yeah, or her. Fire him. And, and you know, everyone who writes, just, just throw it in there. Just put it, just print it the way it is. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's true. <laughs> we save so Everybody much time. Everybody needs a good copy editor. That Believe is. me. Yes, <laughs> it's true. I thought that was a very good monologue. Oh, thank you, Kimberly. You're welcome. I would like to talk to uh, Dana as, and get your last thoughts on this. Well, I remember um, remember the saying from the No Child Left Behind campaign, which was that um, the soft bigotry of low expectations mm -hmm. is what creates a further divide. So if you're worried about inequality, one of the things that you should want is standards, right. that everybody has to meet the same standards, that they should be aggressive ones, and that you should give people the tools they need and the education they need in order to meet them. Racist. <laughs> Typical white woman. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, I, I'm going to move over here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good.